Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship at Pilgrim United Church of Christ. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning virtually and that you're staying home and staying safe this Christmas season. We know it is difficult, but we have a great, great challenge before us to stay safe and stay home until you can get vaccinated so that this country and this world can resume normal activity, whatever the new normal might be. Just want to bring your attention to a few announcements if you weren't uh, on in time to see them scrolling through before our worship started. We had a Black Lives Matter challenge back in November for our Good Samaritan offering. An anonymous donor offered $10,000 in matching funds if we, through the Pilgrim community, could raise a matching amount. We did it. We raised $10,195, and that will be matched, and $20,195 will go to Black Lives Matter Los Angeles. So we're very excited about that. And also, the December Good Samaritan offering will go to the Internet Interfaith Shelter Network to house people that would normally be cared for and housed in our local churches, they have to be put into motels in order to keep them safe. So the cost of that is extraordinary. So please make a donation to our Good Samaritan offering. You can do that online and what you give will go strictly for that purpose. Also, our Christmas Eve services will be online on Friday, December 25th, I'm sorry, Thursday, December 24th, at 5 p.m. for our family service for children and teenagers and at 9 p.m. for our candlelight and communion service. Those worship broadcasts will be on the same Zoom link for the 9 o'clock service and Facebook at 9 o'clock as well. Thank you. And so now we're going to begin our service with our morning carol. And Terry and Julia will lead us from home in our carol for gathering. Good morning, pilgrims. It's good to be with you. There we go. So good to be with you. Sin and enter in. 
Okay. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Caroline Thiserd, and I'll be your liturgist this morning. Please join me in our congregational affirmation, followed by our call to community. We are an open and affirming community within the United Church of Christ with a progressive theology, a commitment to spiritual growth, and a passion for social justice. Sing out my soul, sing of the holiness of God. God has blessed the full bellied with emptiness and given the gift of tears to those who have never wept. God's spirit has entered the gardens of the womb and inhabited our flesh. Sing of the longing of God. Sing out my soul. And now please join Terry at home again as we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing Together. Good morning again. Um, I wanted to let you know the second verse is different than the traditional words. Uh, we have found a great resource of progressive Christmas carol lyrics. And so the, the lyrics we're gonna sing for the second verse will be on your side. And now please join us in the lighting of the Advent candle liturgy. O oh, Holy One, we light this fourth candle and marvel at your desire to be one with us. Let its flame summon hearts grown cold into the warmth of a people living in the light of love. Fill our lives with love, making room there for friends and strangers, all who desire to know you, God, with us as we work for justice and peace in the service of hope. 
And now please join in the unison prayer of invocation. O wondrous God, send your messenger to us today with a word of grace. If we are fearful, move us to confidence. If we are weary, offer us rest. If we are empty, fill us with hope. We have been searching for you far away. Let us find you at home in our midst, changing hearts and minds urging us to join your work of love. We pray in the name of the one who is coming, Jesus, the anointed one. And now we're using the ringing of our mindfulness bell to spend a few moments in quiet meditation. The Gospel of Luke is one of the two books of the New Testament that includes an infancy narrative about Jesus. Why this part of Jesus's life is not of greater interest in other parts of the New Testament has baffled scholars from the beginning of the Christian church. Now hear the ancient voices in Luke chapter one, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. 
He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And here ends the reading. And now we have special music sung by Joey Pearson at home. Breath of Breath Heaven of by Grant. Grant. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I believe you can see me. Thank you uh, for that beautiful reading, Caroline. Before I sing this morning, I just want to reflect with you over how horrifying that experience of being selected by God to uh, bear a child would have been for Mary at this time. And in the chat space, I have put in a prayer uh, that is the chorus of this song that reads, breath of heaven, hold me together, be forever near me, breath of heaven, lighten my darkness, pour over me your holiness, you are holy, breath of heaven. This song uh, was ri originally written from the perspective of Mary, as though Mary is singing, I changed the lyrics uh, to be speaking about Mary, but the prayer, that chorus, doesn't change. And so I invite you to sing with me, if you can, and if you know the song, the chorus, for that will remain the same for this classic, beautiful uh, Christmas song. Yes. 
so she prayed as we should pray so with me pray breath of heaven hold me together be forever near me breath of heaven breath of heaven lights in my dark Thank you, Joey, for that beautiful song, and to Terry and to Julia, who was with her, her daughter, singing so beautifully for our hymns, our carols uh, this morning, to really, really put us in that Christmas spirit. My sermon this morning is entitled, Mission Impossible, Three. I've used that title before, I've been told, so just like the franchise, this is another installation. Our passage comes from Luke chapter one, and my focus text is verses 30 through 38. There we find these words. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be done with me according to your Before I go further, just one technical correction. Could we kill the blower? Thank you. The gospel writers were not concerned with history as much as they were concerned with theology. That is not to say whether the writers themselves believed that Jesus was conceived in a miraculous fashion, but why it was important for them to say so, at least two of the four gospels. For these writers, the theological assertion that Jesus was special to God was supported by evidence that could be found throughout his life 
even from before he was born. That's the point they're trying to make with these stories. This claim about the virginal conception, as it's technically referred to, was made after his crucifixion as part of the rehabilitation of Jesus from condemned criminal to the anointed one of God. And so the writer of the gospel that we call Luke, also known as the third gospel, tells a story based on the historical fact that Jesus was born. Okay, that's fact one. And maybe also the historical fact that it was broadly known that he was born prior to the consummation of the marriage of his mother and her husband, Joseph. Now you will have read that Mary was betrothed to Joseph, engaged. And that was a very elaborate legal and social event. And they were legally married at the beginning of the betrothal, but it was a period of transition from when the woman would be taken from the house of her father and brought to the house of her husband, and that the husband would transfer to the house of the father the bride price. And so while these transfers were going on, she was legally married to her husband, but they had not come together to consummate the marriage. That's the way they did it back then. I'm not even going to talk about how we do it now. So that might have been a historical fact that Mary gave birth at a time in an untimely fashion, according to the betrothal and their coming into the same household. So his story, Luke's story, explains the early birth by offering this notion of the divine generation of Jesus. This was the gospel writer's way of marking Jesus' destiny as an historic, transformative, and world-changing life. All of this, however, depended on the cooperation of a little girl named Mary. In many ways, Mary is the shero of this story. Jesus will do great things later in his life, but Mary is the one who must first complete her mission, a mission I like to call Mission Impossible. Now, the television show and, the, of course, the movies had this signature opening that always followed a set pattern. And I think, I think that pattern will help us understand this story a little bit better. In fact, one of the leading scholars of the New Testament, Raymond Brown, says that the birth narrative in Luke follows a very familiar pattern of miraculous births that are recorded in several places in the Old Testament. And of course, we know that there are recordings of miraculous births of many of the Greek gods and of the Roman heroes themselves, where a divine being impregnates a human and produces this Apollo or produces this Alexander the Great. The pattern in the Old Testament goes something like this. There's an angel, there's a problem pregnancy. Usually the woman is too old, like Sarah and Abraham, or without a husband, like Ruth, or infertile, like Hannah. And then there is a naming, and then there is a baby. That's the pattern of these miraculous births, if you will. I'd like to superimpose the Mission Impossible pattern on our story today. Now, I wish I had recorded the music, but I think everybody here can help me. Let's get a little started. Maybe even you, Gary, can find the right key. You everybody ready? 
We know the music. We know the pattern. There is a greeting on the recorded tape, followed by the predicament that the nation is in, followed by the mission consisting of both a challenge and a reward. And then it concludes with the disavowal or disclaimer. Should you or any members of your team be caught, the secretary will disavow any knowledge of your activities. I never knew whether that was the secretary of defense or state or what. So let's, let's look at the story today in this frame of the Mission Impossible format. First, there is the greeting. The angel comes to Mary and says, good morning. Then there is the predicament. Mary, God needs you to deliver God's son into the world. Currently, the usual mode of conception simply will not do. That's the predicament. The world needs to know that this is God's son and not some run-of-the-mill joker who is pretending to be a magician and a faith healer. Therefore, and here comes the challenge. Your task, should you choose to accept it, is to conceive in your womb a son. Now, you will have to do this before you consummate your marriage. So, well, you know, when it's all over, you will still be a virgin. And should you succeed, here's the reward part. You will name him Jesus and he will be great. He will be called the son of the most high and will sit on the throne of David and reign forever and there will be no end to his kingdom. And then here's the tactic. In order to accomplish this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. And then, just like the self-destructing tape, the angel disappears. I'm no angel. So, what does this mean to us? I think that each of us is like Mary. We do not perceive ourselves as anything special. We are just ordinary folk trying to live ordinary lives, trying to raise a family the conventional way, hope that they get a good education, get a good job so we don't have to support them until they're 50. And then we can retire to a 55 plus community and take long walks on the beach. That's all we're trying to do in this life. But no, just life was rolling along, the whole world is thrown into a whirlwind. And an angel, not just in Nazareth, but an angel appears here in Carlsbad, here in Southern California, here, wherever here is for you. And it is appearing to each one of us. It is letting us know that there is a very, very serious problem in the world. And it's not the Secretary of Defense or State, but it is the Most High God that is sending you a message this Christmas season. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Not to have a birthday party for Jesus every year, but to remind us what his life means for us and how we live our lives. And the job of the church is to present this message and challenge to each and every one of us. And so I do believe God is sending us a message this year. Oh, after 2020, God is sending us a message this year. And interestingly, it follows a similar pattern. 
And it goes something like this. The greeting. Good morning, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Smith, Mr. Gordon, Ms. Lee, Mrs. Shockley, Mr. Mrs. Paulson, Mr. Joe, whoever and whatever your name is, just fill in the blank, the blank, because the greeting is coming to you. And then the predicament. The world is in a pandemic. And the most powerful nation in the world is in total chaos. America, America is divided like it hasn't been since the Civil War of the 19th century. It is amazing, but after the Enlightenment and after the 20th century advances of science and medicine and astrophysics, facts are no longer relevant. Conspiracy theories are proliferating like cicadas in the 17th year. Children can't go to school. Unemployment is increasing. Confidence in the vaccine is decreasing. Neighbor is threatening neighbor. There is the challenge that we all face. And your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to conceive, not a baby, but to conceive of a way to unify, let's just start with your family, to unify your family, to unify your community, to unify your nation, and to unify this world. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to bring people together to help fight the pandemic, to get these people to wear masks, to convince enough people, at least 70%, to get vaccinated against COVID-19 so that businesses can operate again. Our children can go back to school and resume learning so that people will be healthy and strong and so that people will not die. We've crossed 300,000 deaths just here in the United States. Headed, they say now, to 500,000 deaths by April. So while we have the vaccine on its way, it's not here yet, but the virus is. And so your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to stay home this Christmas and stay safe so that that 500,000 number might not ever be reached. So this is our predicament. How will we do this, you might ask. I am a virgin. No, well, you're not a virgin, but you are not whatever you perceive yourself to be. You might think, I'm not smart enough. I'm not powerful enough. I'm not persuasive enough. I'm, how can this be a mission for me? I'm none of what it takes to deliver for God in this year of 2020. This is an impossible mission. But the good news, the good news is nothing is impossible with God. How can this be? We are each going to have to be like Mary. First of all, what does the angel say? Do not be afraid. We are going to have to let the Holy Spirit come over us. <clears throat> now, I know some of y'all are afraid of the Holy Spirit, but don't be afraid. That's what the angel is saying. Let the Holy Spirit into your life. We are going to have to let the power of the Most High God overshadow us. And if we're allowing God, if we allow God to come into our lives, then we will conceive. Not in our wombs, but we shall conceive in our hearts the love of God. We will conceive in our minds the grace and mercy of God, and we will give birth. We will deliver, not a son, but we will give birth to a world of justice. We will bear a nation of righteousness. 
We will produce a planet of prosperity and we will heal the land and slow the rise of the oceans. Nothing is too hard with God. We might think it impossible, but when God gets in the picture, when the Holy Spirit empowers God's people, there is nothing we cannot do. Too hard? Not hard. Because nothing is impossible with God. Too hard? Not hard. Let the Holy Spirit overshadow your life. And though the angel might have left out of Mary's room, God will not leave us. So when the angel appears to us, let us be like Mary and simply say, here I am, ready to serve God. When you figure out what your mission is, your peculiar, your particular mission is in this world. It might be that neighbor next door to you. It might be some family member far away. It might be getting involved in your community. It might be being the one to make that first step to that person you've never spoken to in the last four, five, six years. It might be something you think is impossible, but just say that you are open to that possibility. Here I am, ready to serve God. Let it be with me according to God's word. But the difference between mission impossible and God's mission mission possible is that the secretary will not disavow our actions. No, 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 the God who sends us on our mission will not disavow, will not deny, will not forsake us, but God will be with us. Emmanuel, that's what the word means. God is with us. That is the ultimate message of Christmas, that we as humans are not alone, but the one who sent us into the world the one who brought us into the world and sends us into the world to make it a livable and lovable place is with us in the work that must be done. And with God, the mission is possible. Let the people of God say, amen. Special music from Jeff and Dory Patterson. And while they're getting ready, I just want to make this announcement to our congregation. The virtual patio will be open. As soon as this service is open, please sign in to the joys and concerns. And for the first 10, maybe even 15 minutes, wander around our virtual patio. Say hello to your friends, maybe even make some new ones. So don't Turn off your computer when the service is over, but click the link for our joys and concerns and the virtual patio will be open for the first 10 or 15 minutes, including breakout rooms. And then we'll have joys and concerns shortly after 11 a.m. I'll see you on the patio. Side, see the wise men.
Thank you, Jeff and Dory. Thank you, Jeff and Dory. Uh, just another reminder that on Thursday, December 24th, Christmas Eve, uh, for our youth program and for our young children, we'll have our Christmas Eve family service at 5 p.m. And then for the general public, both on Zoom and Facebook, we will have our 9 p.m. candlelight and communion service for Christmas Eve. So please join us on Zoom or on Facebook on this very same link. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up the light of God's presence upon you and be gracious to you. Let the people of God say, Merry Christmas. Amen.